So SketchUp 2019.2 was just released and in this video I'm going to review all of the new features that we now have in SketchUp Pro and Layout. Hey, I'm Matt from MasterSketchup.com, author of SketchUp to Layout and co-author of SketchUp and Layout for Architecture. Now, with the introduction to subscription plans in 2019, SketchUp announced that they were now going to switch to a continual update schedule. So instead of having annual releases, we would get incremental releases throughout the year. And this represents kind of the first major release that we're seeing ever since they switched to that model. So let's go ahead and look at some of the specific improvements that we're seeing now in SketchUp Pro in layout. So the first thing is the SketchUp export image option. We now have the ability to scale the line weight. So that's gonna take the existing uh, line weight that's defined by the SketchUp style and add a multiplier to it. So this solves an issue where if you override the default view size of your export, so if you like export a really large resolution image, the line scale wouldn't really um, change relative to the resolution that you've defined. So basically, if you exported an image in a really high resolution, the edges would appear very thin. So this gives you manual control over the edge line multiplier factor. Um, so by default on my computer, uh, if I go with the standard export, it's just gonna be a 2X multiplier because I have a 4K monitor. Everything's scaled uh, by 200%. So SketchUp will naturally uh, wanna export a 2X multiplier. But if I override that default view size and define something even larger, I might wanna bump that up to like, a 3x or 4x uh, line multiplier in order to have the edges appear uh, correctly relative to the resolution that I'm exporting. So this is gonna be really handy if you like exporting images from SketchUp to create composites in Photoshop, to combine with other renders and things like that. The next thing related to images is material transparency. Now you might have in the back of your head that we already had that feature as there was already an option to have a transparent background when exporting a PNG image from SketchUp. But in fact, if you had a material that was transparent or semi-transparent, you actually could not maintain that transparency when you tried to export it. It would actually export as a solid fill. So if you tried to bring that image into Photoshop, you would still see the transparency in the context of the model itself, but the image transparency didn't exist. So with SketchUp 2019.2, all your transparencies in your materials will be uh, respected during the export of the PNG. And we also have an awesome new feature with the uh, file importing process. Um, this was such a cause of confusion for a lot of users, including myself, still happened to me um, very recently, uh, where I forgot that you had to select the exact file type that you want to import. And no longer do you have to do that. You can select all supported file types and SketchUp will just show you everything in the folder that you happen to be in um, that SketchUp can import. So I think this is just a nice uh, feature to add to SketchUp and I'm definitely gonna be just having that set as my default moving forward. We're also seeing some major changes to how units are defined in SketchUp. So you might know that SketchUp uh, works in real world units. So you can actually input any dimension you want regardless of which dimension or which unit you have defined in your model info panel. However, um, the units that you define in the model info panel uh, will affect how SketchUp shows measurements to you. And up until now, you only had the ability to define a single unit for the entire model. And now with SketchUp 2019.2, you have the ability to define a different uh, measurement for length 
area and volume. So that's really handy, for instance, if you want to set up uh, you know, decimal inches for your length, but you want to always maintain a uh, square footage for your area. So uh, that's just going to give you a lot more control over uh, the dimensions. And just to note, if you look at fractional and architectural, those are kind of going to kind of be locked into a predefined format. So you're not going to be able to change those. You'll have to go to decimal in order to have the control over each of the, uh, the length, volume and area individually. All right, the next thing we have is invert selection. So if you uh, s create a selection in your model, you can now press Control Shift I and that will invert the selection. And you can also find that option now in the edit menu. So I can't really think of any creative uh, scenarios off the top of my head of where exactly this will be useful, but I know there's gonna be like one day that I'm like, oh my God, I'm so glad I have this feature. Um, so I'm sure if, you know, I'm sure you guys can think of uh, some really good uses for that invert selection. The next thing is the eraser um, alt modifier. So this is a new modifier key where if you accidentally um, select an edge while you're clicking and dragging with the eraser tool, instead of having to undo and kind of start over, you can simply hold down the alt key and hover over the edges that you want to remove from the erase selection. And those will be removed without you having to start all over. So this is just a great addition um, to provide a little bit of a tweak to the eraser tool and just make our lives a lot easier. All right, the next change is to the section plane tool. Uh, so previously you would get a prompt asking you for the name of the section plane before you actually place it in the model. So they just switched that around. So now you place the section plane first and then you will be prompted to name it. So I think that's a little bit more logical to name it afterwards because you know you might not know exactly where you want to place it. So you know the context of the name might not come to you right away until after you've placed it. So I think that's a pretty smart move to, to have that small change. All right, and the next feature is uh, we have send to layout. Uh, built into the large tool set. It's all the way down at the bottom if you didn't see it at first, but you know, previously you would have to go to the file menu and go send to layout in order to, you know, send your model directly to layout. And so I think it makes sense to have a dedicated toolbar button that you can just click, you know, right on your toolbar uh, to bring you straight to layout. And the last new feature in SketchUp is the offset tool. So we have this tweak now where instead of the offset being calculated by the edge, um, it's calculated by the vertices. It's really just like a small tweak to make more accurate offset movements. You know, because SketchUp doesn't really use curves, it uses segmented edges to represent curves. Um, having it offset by the vertices is going to just kind of represent a more accurate curve uh, when you're, you know, trying to offset by specific dimensions. I'm pretty sure that's correct. I'm, I, I could be wrong on that, so don't don't hold me to it. All right, now that brings us to layout. So with 2019.2, we're seeing a lot of tweaks to the dimensions. So the first thing is when you're editing text in layout, it used to be that you would have to single click on the dimension, then you could double click to edit the dimension, then you have to single click the dimension text, and then you could double click it in order to edit that text. Now they've gotten rid of the requirement for the single click and you can just double click to enter into the dimension and double click to enter into the text. And while you're editing that text, you'll notice it looks a little bit different. There's two carrots there which represent the dimension itself. And what you can do is add any text outside of those carrots and uh, layout will maintain the intelligence in the dimension. So previously, if you were to override that text or add any text to a dimension text box, that dimension would now all of a sudden not be reading you know, any proper measurement. So if the dimension length changed at all, that text was not going to update. But now you can add any custom text that you want to a dimension without worrying about losing that connection uh, to the actual measurement. With layout, you can now also 
create isometric dimensions. So by holding down the Alt key, uh, you can create an isometric dimension. Hold Alt and Shift, you can unlock the dimensions from snapping to horizontal, vertical, or perpendicular. We now also have the ability to set the gap distance or length distance on dimension extension lines. So that's really cool to have that ability because now as the dimension moves around that gap and length distance is going to be fixed by whatever you have defined there. The next change to the dimensions in layout is that they will now scale with the parent object that they are anchored to. So previously if you tried to scale an object that had dimensions attached to it, the dimension uh, projection would not uh, move at all. It would basically stay where it was. The anchors would move with you know wherever they were anchored to, uh, but the dimension line itself would just stay put. And now if you scale an object, that dimension uh, is going to scale and offset with it. And the last additional feature we have to the dimensions is that the bounding box is going to stay relative to the dimension line itself. So what that means is if you have rotated dimensions, uh, you're no longer gonna have the scale box uh, that's uh, oriented to your screen. It's gonna be oriented to the dimension itself, which is gonna make it a lot easier to adjust dimensions that have been rotated. And the last two things that we've seen improved in layout are some small tweaks to um, how you select objects in layout, as well as uh, quicker editing. So now you can just select an object and tap enter or return to uh, jump into edit mode uh, for those objects. So on top of all of these new features, there's a ton of bug fixes. If you wanna read the release notes, I will leave a link in the description below. And other than that, um, I'm pretty happy to see you know, a lot of these new features and I hope that we're gonna see um, a lot more frequent updates like this uh, coming in the future. So thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you're interested in getting more of my SketchUp tutorials and videos like this. And thanks for watching. <laughs>